exactly right. We'll go to item one on the agenda, which is 43 Heathcote Gardens, Harlow, pages six to eight on the agenda. And uh, Chris, you're dealing with that? Where are you, Chris? Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, so the application is at 43 Heathcote Gardens and it's for a single garage to the side extension with the repositioning of the boundary treatment. So this is the plan showing the location. This is an aerial image of the site. The existing front elevation. The proposed front elevation the existing rear elevation, the proposed rear elevation, the existing side elevation, the proposed side elevation, the proposed ground floor plan, the proposed first floor roof plan, the proposed block plan with the repositioning of the fence line, and here's some site photos. Uh, officer recommendation. So officers consider that the works would not result in unacceptable harm to the character and appearance of the application dwelling or area, neighboring amenity or parking highway safety conditions. The proposal is therefore in compliance with the relevant policies within the local plan and supplementary documents and the recommendation there is that committee grant permission subject to the conditions as listed in the report. Put my mic on. Do you all hear me anyway? Can you hear me? Yeah. Good evening, sir. It works. Well, uh, I hope you don't mind if I read notes. Look, I don't want to miss anything. Uh, well, good evening, councillors and officers. My reasons why I believe this planning application should not be allowed is for one reason only. It's on the grounds of health and safety of people passing through Heath, Heathcote Gardens. Heathcote Gardens also have a, an alleyway where people cut through from um, other houses on the estate. So it's a quite a busy um, area. And it gets very, very busy at times, especially home times and school times. More and more cars are parking on the footpath and curb and this is because the road is very narrow and it's also very twisty, like kind of that, a very bad design and it was made in 1998. I've lived in Heathcote Garden since 1998 and I think that's about 26 years. Um, doesn't mean much, but I love that um, the house in Heathcote Gardens and the people who live there. Um, number 43 is situated on a corner, a 90 degree corner, and I live opposite that house, also on the corner. And as you know, most households have more than one car and my immediate neighbour has indeed five cars and six when the boyfriend arrives. And I have uh, one car which is parked on the driveway and I cause no problems about congestion or danger to pedestrians. Number 43, I couldn't help but notice well, they've got a van and a car, fair enough, nothing wrong with that. But if the proposed garage is built, their van or car will 
be parked on the corner of Heathcote Gardens opposite me. And we all know that garages are eventually used to store bikes, toys and other all kinds of clutter. I'm not saying they'll do that, but I just wanted to uh, mention that to the uh, council. The problem is this. Mums and dads with prams, they have to go on the road because it's so cluttered up there. Is that me? Gone. Uh, some have walking toddlers too, and also wheelchairs have to go through the road too, wheelchair users. And people who use electric four-wheelers all have to go on the road because the cars are parked on the curb Mr. all Mr. the Hope. way down. You've had your three minutes. Okay, Is thank you. Finished? I would just like to say, please say no to this, what I would call a faux garage, because we all know it will be used for um, clutter. Okay. Well, thank you for coming. Thank you. Okay. And we now have Lisa Parker, the applicant. Would you like to come forward? Again, press the red button and you've got three minutes. Good evening, council members. Um, I'm Lisa Parker. Um, me and my partner, Ben Gibson. Oh. Is that better? <laughs> um, me and my partner, Ben, um, we are the occupiers and owners of 43 Heathcote Gardens. And... The main reason we've applied for this planning permission is because we are looking for a functional garage with the extra addition, which is benefits of an extra loft space. We also live in a very small two bedroom house, which has a very small kitchen, which the boiler overtakes a lot of that space. And if applied, if approved, we'd like to move that to the loft space in the garage to allow to, for us to utilise the space that we do have efficiently. Additionally to um, in, internal benefits, we'd also like to move the, the fencing to the side and the front in order to keep it tidier, as me and Ben are not gardeners and we are, we, it's, you know, we can't maintain it to the standard that, you know, might not be what to what people think should be. So... Um, additionally, we'd also like to um, match sort of the styles of housing that's also around the area. So opposite, we have number 24 who have a double garage. So we'd like to match the same style so it doesn't look out of place and it will look neat and tidy in comparison to the rest of the road. Um, I'd, li I'd like to also state that me and Ben only own one car each at the time of the application anyway. And now, since then, Ben has bought a van. So that is a total of three vehicles overall. Um, with the addition of the garage being functional, we'd also like to convert a small part of our garden in order to be able to have an extra space so that no cars would be able to move onto the road. Um, and if anything, we'd actually have an extra space left. Um, Currently, with Ben having his um, van for the past month, we have managed to keep it consistently off the road. It has not been, it's been on our drive the entire time. Um, ben is in, in the construction business, obviously, because of his van. A, we hope that a garage would also lend to a lot safer tool storage, um, you know, to make sure that everything's safe. During the, during the actual um, building and construction, we'd definitely be um, very conscious to keep noises and disruptions to an absolute minimum, as we did when we renovated the inside of our house last year. We keep noises to a reasonable hour and make sure that no construction vehicles or tools are left to the road. And I'll just summarise here. Um, we've had a couple of our neighbours um, express uh, like come to us and express their, their agreements for this and we definitely um, encourage all of our neighbours if any problems 
to come up to us and discuss any issues and we will resolve the best that we can. Okay, thank you very thank much. Thank you very much. Yep, yep. thank you. Members, questions and clarification? No? no? Discussion? Oh? No. Sorry. Yes? Mm -hmm. Nancy, sorry. No? No, not at all. No others. So, discussion, anyone? Yep? No? Yes? Councillor. Just to just to acknowledge in air that uh, of course parking is a perennial contention in in many neighbourhoods and one of my concerns would have been about off um, on pavement parking but I'm reassured by Ms Parker's uh, presentation to the committee and, and that has alleviated one a, a big part of that concern but that would have been my question had it not been addressed in the comments but uh, just to simplify that. I, I recognise the challenges of parking in Harlow, and it's something we're acutely aware of, but um, that's all really just an observation on what we've heard. That's fine. Okay, thank you. Any more discussions? No? We'll go straight to the vote. Recommendation is on page... I've got it here somewhere. Oh, dear. Why can't I get my papers together? Page 12. The recommendation is to, to grant permission. All those in favour? Unanimous. Unanimous. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.